afternoon, everyone, and thanks for stopping in to Awe Studio Art with Everyone. And thank you for your comments about the process of leisure, which you see I have a couple of coats up here, and I'm going to show you how to go on and create levels four and five. So here we have the two colors that we mixed up last time, and you can review that in the previous video. Now we're going to add a little more matte medium to both of them and more colors so that we can intensify the layers as we go. And what I'll do is just use this cap for the matte medium. And I'm going to split that into both caps, half in both. because we are going to be adding a little more color to each one. And here's where you need to go very, very judiciously. You could even take a brush if you feel that you can't control the color. And I'm just gonna add a drop of yellow here to warm this up. Okay. And a little bit of this Vermilion. Just a drop of that too. Only one drop. Ooh, that might have been more than one drop. I may have to add a little more yellow to that. Let's see what happens. Oh, that squeaked by with that. So let's see. Wet the sponge first. Oh, and pay attention. If you have two sponges that you used, like I did before, you might notice this one looks a little red-orange and that one actually has a violet cast to it. So I would suggest definitely use the sponge that is for the warm color and continue that way. Squeeze out and let's go right up here to this canvas and give it some movement. And as you can see, it's rather rich now, which is good. And I talked about how I don't like the cloudy look and nobody's really gotten mad at me yet <laughs> for that. Because some people I know really do like to get a lot of texture across there. I'm not so much engaged in that. I prefer it to be rather just an emanation of color. Then I'm going to come through with my drip catcher. It shouldn't be too wet. You see those bubbles on there? That was actually not preferable. So I can get them off by just drying. Wherever I see drips or places that need blending, I just take this roller and go through different directions. Okay, now while this is drying, you can just barely see that there is some nuance a variation of color, kind of breathing of color. And that's just perfect. Now let's go over here to the red violet. And we see that we put in the matte medium for that. This is the color that we had before. It would naturally go on heavier, even now without adding any more color, but I am going to intensify it for the purposes of this demonstration. And now I'm going to use just a touch of carmine red. Just a dribble. Always comes out faster than I think it's going to. And let's add in the ultramarine blue. Just a little bit of that. Only a few drops to begin with. 
because we don't want to get too intense too quickly. See, that's nice and purple. We could even just get it a slight bit bluer so it shows up different than the warm side. That's perfect. Go. Actually, you have to imagine that you're starting at the top of the wall, at the ceiling, and you're doing this movement throughout your walls, and then the people are coming underneath, catching the drips, doing something with the drips to blend them. And the way you go about that is perhaps you take a sponge roller like this and lightly go through, or you can try something like this and I think they use this in plaster work, also creates a, a nice airy quality. Personally, I prefer the sponge, the sponge roller. squeeze out as much of the liquid now because I really want it to get so you can see it and here we go starting at the top oh that's perfect nice and warm and imagine this is like layer number what four or five so you can see that it gets more difficult when you have more of the color in there, in the sponge. Now that is way too much drips. So what I can do is, if I don't wanna get the other utensils to blend it, I can take most of the color out of my sponge and those people who would be underneath would have less color and then come through and do my blending. And the more I blend, the better this is gonna be. Let's try it a little bit with our sponge roller. Let's see why I like this just softens. And of course, if you're working on a large surface, such as a giant room wall, then by the time you get back to where you started, if it's a nice warm summer day, it'll be dry quickly. And this makes the wall so fresh. You're literally washing the wall with color over and over again. So it's a really hygienic feel. And see how I'm bringing the color into what is going to be more of the violet space, because after this layer, we're going to allow the colors to intermingle. Now let's get that red violet to be a little bit more blue. So you'll be able to see it up there. It's so pretty. And here we go. Now this time we're going to allow the red violet to cross over into the warm orange. And you see that I have a 
much bigger space. Ooh, a lot of drips. Much bigger space of the orange. But I'm going to allow this to sweep over it. And I'm going to have to come back through with a lot of drip damage. Let's see how this can then begin to overlap in a free way. And then we'll go through with our roller. And this is going to further have the nuances come in the variation of color by overlapping one color, breathing into another. And when you're doing a surface such as up to down, or you want to lift the ceiling, you'll definitely want to be using different colors. And if you get close up, you can begin to see how this is nuancing. Okay, last pass for the purple. And I'm gonna get it pretty heavy if I can. I'll have my drip catcher handy. And here we go, starting at the top of rosiness. Look at how that creates a beautiful overlay over the gold. And if we were to continue over the entire gold, we would see it getting a nuance of color that we didn't see before. And as I'm going along, I'm actually releasing a little more paint from the sponge by squeezing. And this is a very refined technique. You probably could work at that for a little bit because you'll find that it's easy to let too much color out at once and then, then that's when you get the drips. Now, as I'm going back through, I'm trying to honor uh, a little bit of my movements that I thought were good, or your comrades, who have your colleagues uh, who have been doing it. I'm going to finish up now with this richer gold, which I'm gonna put in through here, and right in here you notice it is wet. So we'll see, and you'll get to experience how it reacts when we put it into a wet surface. We'll start up here where it's dry and look at that richness of gold. This is just my kind of a warmth. We'll go on through into the, the wet part now. And that does create a different feel. When it's wet, it doesn't have quite as much transparency. You'll get more of a matte quality. And then come through with your drip catcher and modify. If you're getting those little bubbles, and you can see if kind of looking sideways on the canvas here, you'll see little bubbles. And these mean that it's too wet. So we need to reduce the wetness a little bit. Notice how I'm drying my blending tool. Making sure that I don't repeat any movements too often, but a little bit is fine. Still looking, and even a third row can come through a third set of eyes if you have enough people and check out those drips. 
Okay, everyone, now look right up in here and you can see some very fine nuances of mixtures of red violet into the gold yellows. And it may create edges, which later will give it that sort of cloudy look. So that is why blending at the end is so key to getting a nuanced kind of effect with the color. And yes, you do want some movement on the wall. Just make sure it's conscious and not just happening because that's where you stopped. So what I'd like to do next with this is show you how you could create a wonderful children's theme on here if you wanted to decorate it or maybe you wanted some motif, a plant kind of suggestion or something like that. So if you have some suggestion that you want me to take this prepared surface into, let me know and I'll go forward with that. Take a screenshot of these measurements and use it when you're mixing up your color, your matte medium and water. 